Question 14. So we're told to use this substitution. So we just swap this in. And uh, well, let's see, let's see what happens. So we know that u equals 4 minus u to the half. So therefore, we can actually write down du over dh there. So we can just differentiate this part just here. So if we differentiate that, that's just going to give us minus 1 over 2 uh, two times root the h like that. So we're going to need the h here, so we can use it over here. So if we multiply by dh, multiply by this over here, and we're, we're going to get a negative there as well. So we're going to end up with that there, the dh. So now let's take this and just substitute it back in and see where we've got to. So it actually looks more complicated at the moment, but we do have something involving du. But the problem is this here, up here. Now let's go back over to here and think about what u is equal to. So u is equal to 4 minus h cubed. So if we just rearrange this, so I've got a minus there. So I can also say u minus 4. I can just substitute this back in. So if I now write, so we can have 2 times u minus 4. 4 over u du. So let's multiply this out, see where we get to. So we get 2u minus 8 over u. But let's think about it kind of individually. And now we've got something that we can actually uh, integrate relatively easily. So the two u's there are going to cancel each other out. So if we integrate this part, that's so with respect to u there, that's just going to give me 2u. And then we're going to have minus 8 ln u. And then plus c, plus something. Now let's go and substitute back in what u is. So remember, u is this up here. So we've got 2 times 4 minus, let's write it as, whoops, rather odd looking root. Um, so we can have 2 times that, and then minus, and then we've got 8 ln, and then 4 take away root h, and then plus some c. Right, so if we multiply this out, that's going to give me minus 8 ln 4. There we go, we're nearly there. And then we're going to have minus, I'm going to get the minus 2 root h from over there. And then we've also got like this plus, plus 8, plus c. So here, we're just calling that a a constant there. And that was where we wanted to get to on the first part of the question, just up there. All right, we don't need to worry about that. Eight, just there. Right, okay, let's now go and have a look at part B and try and make sense of what that's actually asking. So it says, so find according to the model, the range of heights of trees in this species. So I'm, I'm just going to solve this one just here because actually it's identifying the range of the heights. So it's given me dh over dt. So if I can find the turning point of this, then that's going to be that's going to be the maximum point, isn't it? So in other words, when is this equal to 
zero. And that's going to give me my, my maximum height. So when's it going to be equal to zero? Well, obviously, I'm not too worried about this bit. It's, it's this bit here I'm really interested in. So it's when is 4 minus root h equal to zero? So 4 equals h. Square both sides. So therefore, at the turning point, the maximum height is 16. So the range of heights is up to including 16. And at the moment, in terms of what we know, it's going to have to be so it's more, than, more than zero as well. Right then, let's have a look at the last part of the question. So the last part of the question is, now it, it does another big clue here, is it does talk about differential equations. Okay, so you need to know how to deal with differential equations. This is a differential equation. So think about how we're going to handle that there. So one of these trees is planted one meter high when it's first planted. So in other words, T is zero, H is one. So we're going to have to come back to that bit of information. So we're going to need to focus on this over here. So let's just rewrite this. And if we just write it, it's just going to give himself a little bit more space here. So let's just write it out again, just so you can see that there. What did we have? We had t to the 0 0.25. Um, and then it was 4 minus root h over 20. Right, so by differential equation, the dt is going to come over here. Anything that H is going to go this way, any T's are going to stay over on this side. So let's have a little think about how that's going to happen. So we're going to divide by this. So we end up with DH over 4 minus root H. And that's, wait a minute, should recognise that from a moment ago. And then that's going to leave us with t to the 0 0.25 over 20. Remember that dt's come up over here. So that just basically means, so we're going to integrate this, integrate in this side. This side we're integrating with respect to the h. This side we're integrating with respect to t. So let's write down what we've got. So we already know what this is going to be because we've just, we've done that previously. So we had minus 8 uh, lun 4, there we go, and minus 2. Now there was also this add k thing, wasn't there? Kind of just just a, a constant value. I'm not going to worry too much about that. We'll see why in a second. And if we integrate this with respect to t, that's going to give me t to the 5 over 4 over 25. So, and that's going to be like plus a constant on that side. So, to save having them like split on both sides, it's just a constant value. So, we're just going to have one there. It doesn't really matter what you call it. It's just a constant value. Right. What was that information that we knew before? We knew that when h equals 1, that was at time 0. So, this will allow us to work out what this is. So if we just sub in 1 and 0, so that's going to give us 0 just here. What's the rest of it going to be? We're going to have minus 8 ln 3 minus 2. And that's going to equal that constant value. So if we just now just piece it all together, and I know it looks horrible. Well, they are tricky, these. But the more that you that you work with these, then the easier it's gonna be gonna be to do. So run three and minus two. You could have had the constant there and then obviously then it would have just worked out being being a positive. Right. 
Now, the question was at this stage, um, it said, uh, calculate the time this tree would take to reach a height of 12 meters. So take the time it takes, that it's going to take a height of 12. So all that means that we need to do is that we're just going to put in 12 into here. If we add these two as well, so 4 minus and minus, and then add these guys, 8, lun 3, plus 2 equals, okay, right, so we're just going to put in our height equals 12, and if you plug that into here, so you just use your calculator for that, that's a bit yucky, but that gives you 8.85 and, and some stuff, and we know that that's 5 over 4 over 25, so multiply by the 25, so multiply by the 25, and then do the whole lot, so to the opposite power, so in other words, to the power of 4 over 5. And that will give you 75.2 years. Good question, that.